Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting, and evening, and amazing, spectacular propaganda cast from your host, Imperial Dane, the one, the only master propaganda here of Psych, defender of the fatherland. Off here to another glorious, wondrous, amazing propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane, as always. We're off here to a riveting and amazing 1v1 here on Emily Fields in the north it is. Cheese Tan Katsu fighting for America, freedom, democracy in the south it is eternal. Fighting for the Oberkommerst, Germany, Deutschland. We got Grand Offensive, Elite Armored, and Scavenge versus Airborne. Germans here with the second Panzer de Schoen versus Cheese Tan Katsu with the third Armored. Also, a very, very big and hearty thanks to Andrew for donating me a bunch of nice Logitech gear, including microphones, keyboards, a headset, and a new microphone, the Blue Yeti X. So, yeah, my voice should come up, but uh, a bit crisp and more high quality there. So, very big thanks to you, Andrew, you wonderful, wonderful person, you. You absolute champion of the propaganda ministry. And also big thanks to Simon for donating and supporting the propaganda cast. Big thanks to you, Simon, as well. Other people can join the example of, for example, pledging on Patreon, supporting the for that way, or donating my PayPal. A link's in the description. And I should have comment, like, share, subscribe, press the bell button. And of course, let me know how the settings for the microphone are. It's a bit, you know, we'll probably take a bit of adjustment further here. But anyways, off here aggressively in the West, eternally here, going straight for the cart, fuel point there. Catching cheese tongue cats off with using the cool bomb to push around the ripens so they can't get an easy shot on the Sturm Pioneer. Folks are down there with vicious lead here. Eternal showing no mercy to those Americans. Staining their olive green red with blood. Chen turning it straight for the Sturm Pioneer, but there oh, the reactions of the Sturm has landed. One man, the Friedrich Ludwig Heinz, all dead. Cool. But they're getting much money to treat them before they get back. Kuban not being forced back on the east side here. The Eternals forces is being forged. Got a second squad out here. And we got a third round of for Cheese Tan Katsi. With this airborne featuring Pathfinders, 50 cals, paratroopers, the M1 anti tank gun, and P47. There we got Pathfinders out here for Cheese Tan Katsi. Actually cancels the rifle squad. For that, instead, just be calling the Pathfinders. Not bad. Kuban gaining veterans one in the service of Deutschland. We got the forces moving out here for Eternal. Catching right from there, pushing the back with some well placed shot. Kubai, though, could definitely do with some repairs. Back here, Sturm Pioneer, and definitely reinforcements. They are being, well, found forwards. Ralph's right, going up here, forwards pushing eastwards there for Deutschland. In the far east, their point being seized. They could have laid down some sandbags to make it make more easy to defend here, but oh well. Pathfinder's right, coming eastwards here. Perhaps a bit carefully drawn in too much here into Eternal's pace in the west here. We shall see. I imagine here, Chiefs and Cutters' next goal will be to take up. Possibly the lieutenant, possibly the captain. Well, the lieutenant remains the favourite. The captain has definitely, I think, one more uh, room there as of late in the American 1v1 build. So, could very well be a captain who might see from Chiefs and Cutters versus Eternal. We got the cool running westwards there. We got the shooting pass sending up. Truck on the way there. Plus, false going is. And there we go. It is the lieutenant here for Chiefs and Cutters. No big surprises there. Lieutenant going for the point here. Back. Oh, Ralph Gold going for the point there. There's not a lieutenant. He may one day get promoted to lieutenant or something like that, but today is not that day. Sturm Pioneer pushing forward, forward being pushed back. I need to retreat here soon because those are two very low health squads that the Sturm Pioneer could make very short work of. There we go, almost got a wipe there. Eternal there pushing forward to feel Deutschland. Das Vaterland. Samex level the center, very good. And the West Sturm Pioneer moving up, cool bombing up, they're going to repair that, I imagine. Troop reinforcing, and there you go, truck ready. The Schwerer Wehrmacht Schlepper. Troops retreating here, Fort Cheese Tank Katze, Lieutenant almost done, and he's still pumping short, but the Pathfinders. And the rifle squad. Fresh folks squad out there. No doctrine yet for Eternal here versus Chief Sun Katze. Lieutenant out there. Probably a fast mechanized command post into some vehicles. Bit of skirmishing here. Can I take case with the M1 Garand? The West, the Kuwagen once more pushing it for the fuel point there. Erasing it, and there we go. We got the Schutzminus van Fierzig here from Eternal. A mine designed to maim rather than kill. Because the Germans figured maiming someone's actually better than killing them. In both cases, they're not going to be joining the war anytime soon, if ever, obviously. But crucially, if you maim someone, they're going to still be draining a lot of resources and cause a lot more psychological damage to the other chaps around than just killing them. So, bit of a nasty one there, bit of a nasty one. It shows some of the cruel calculations can make up, you know, war efforts. Bit of scrambling on the east side. In the centre, we got the force there. Sturm has back up. Lieutenant charging in the freedom. We're getting focused down. It could turn painfully over the lieutenant. And there goes Sturm Pioneer getting some great kills. And the lieutenant's going to quickly drop dead. And we go down to two men. Almost got a wipe here. Need to a concussion grenade. There we go. Nice throw here by a turn. Oh, still. I ah, fell a bit short there. 
Fell a bit short. Kuban could try and assist, but now the folks are focused down the rear shot. Oh, the Raft squad actually not the rear shot. Focus those down would be a mistake there of the high order by Eternal. Kuban ramming here. Blind hand granada could maybe assist here. Heavy fire now. Go. The focus are ultimately pushed back here. Still, Eternal looking to get control of both few points here from Chief's Tun Caps in the East here. Parfine is caught here by the focus. But the focus is so low in health that Parfine is could possibly finish more here. No grenades here though. Could begin upgrading with Stone Guess. There we go. And the Parfine is ascent packing. No 50 cal, in fact, go straight for the mechanized upgrade first for the platoon command post. Very good there, I suppose. Battle of headquarters with the mechanized command post, drain to medics here for eternal. Very good. Kubad ground point here. Also got a bit of observation there, detection mode going on. Pushing forward here. Beacon air being destroyed here by eternal's full scanner dealer. Season Eastern fuel point here. Excellent. And we got some light mines here from Chiefs and Kata. Thumbs up. Plus a steward light tank being deployed here to deal with those goddamn Nazis. Just reinforcing healing in the center. We got the Sturm Pioneer moving forward here for Eternal. Kuban and Game Reichland, they're shooting to bits here. Southeast Sturm Pioneer advancing for Eternal. And there goes straight into one of the light mines. Rough stuff there, but it does survive. Though the crew, I imagine, isn't having a great time of it. Flag capturing, we're going to be great versus the infantry, but obviously less salient against the steward light tank if we, he might have to go for a patch trick on the storm pioneers because he's not going to be able to get like a raquette in there for any time soon admittedly he doesn't have like a munitions for the patch trick so whatever the case he's going to have a slightly um, bumpy right there once the steward light tank hits the field Pons being seized there Pons being seized fixing up the Kubelwagen Also, fun fact, when it comes to recent troops, the Germans more like to have them deployed on the front line than the Americans, since it was a much more common thing for the Germans, in part due to manpower issues and so on there. So, this is sort of more like, you know, something that'd be more, you know, well, meaningful in the German army to just show these, because, again, a lot of the time they would be an increasingly found themselves on the front line, in particular on the Eastern Front. Creation's troops finding at the front line was very common at times, particularly as the war went on towards the latest days. So little fun fact, the student pioneer is caught here by Link. Don't mind, but the student destroying it easily. And of course now eternally he's gonna have to go for the Kedna for there. No patch trick anytime soon. Got more light vehicle mounts here for Chiefs and Katze. Not laying down any like larger fields, but just laying down enough to disrupt the terms maneuvers and maybe like you know catch a vehicle at the wrong spot and then maybe allow a chance to destroy it. So nice place there by Chiefs and Katze. Thumbs up. Ambulance following up there to provide his men with the most Needed medical support and there go Rav Squad caught with a flag half track two sent a flat gun tang through them. Force and retreat more beacons here for Chiefs and Cuts it. Very good. Kuban falling back here with this detection mode going on. Bit of skirmish in the sewer light tank pushing him back. Pathfinder is holding up here. Ready to sneak up and there we go. Lieutenant up western side ground the point here. Getting in fact soon both few points here. Really good play by Chiefs and Cuts it. It's home perhaps getting a bit too defensive around the center. I think in part due to the sewer light tank. Which allows them Chiefs and Cuts to play around. You've got an anti tank and being dropped in. Excellent there. Making great use of the doctrine. Thumbs up to Chiefs and Cuts as the tunnel. Lone folks were trying to deal with the Raft Squad in the east of the assault rifle. They should have a shot at it. Aha. Uh -huh. The rest of the ten caught the flat car attack and got the full screens closing in. But still a doctrine for Eternal, so well it's honestly hard to say which of these three it could be. I mean technically it could be every one of them still, though typically would also at one point or one of them chosen because you would like typically want some of the early stuff like either Panzerfasnira, the two to one, or the Jaeger, so it's definitely uh very much in the end as to what exactly Turner's planning versus she's turn cuts the Americans. Still stabilizing it versus the Yankees in the center here, right? Well, oh, center west, right? Called Court here, and there it goes, suffering massive damage to the two centimeter flak. In the east here, we got the Kevin opening up the Stewart. Good hit there. And back at base, do we have any upgrades there for she's turn cuts? No, no BAR, bazookas, or grenades. Oh, there we go. Weapon max on the way, very good. Eternal Course may want to soon take up. We've got the NG-34 first, bringing up more support weapons. Not uncommon for most Obel Commons players that go for the flag half tech. They will typically fill up on the NG-34 so they have multiple sources of suppression. Not a bad idea there. Meanwhile, Chiefs and Cuts has nothing now on that part of the map. Or the sector. Storm Pines using points here. No Minesweepers. Got the flag half taking westward, ready to deflect an assault here from Chiefs and Cuts. Likely happening there. Full has got the point in the neutral, but we'll have to retreat, I think. As Chiefs and Cut and his merry band of Americans are, we'll bring in more and more heavy equipment. And just men. It's moving forward to the Fox Committee, so we've got the truck halfway down there for Eternal. Parfums moving up here for Chiefs and Cuts. Lieutenant moving up there as well. Straight into the Schutzen Mini here, Svein Fiertzik. And there you go, Hi. Oh, not Heinz, but Hans. And Johnny get blown to bits. 
hands for later, it'll be known as hands because that's all he could use after his feet got blown off. Got the truck setting out there for Eternal. Die schwere Wehrmachtschlepper. And these we got two squads going up, they equipped with the BAR. We got more shoots in here from Eternal, but still no Doctrine. I do wonder what he's thinking there. At this point, it's likely he's just going to. Well, he, he's planning them for the late game stuff. Like, it could be maybe an Austin Rush if he's been feeling cheeky. Could be the Storm T. It could be the Tiger Tank, really. So, lots of stuff that's still on the table here for Eternal versus Chiefs and Katsu. But I do feel like he's looking at something up and making use of the earlier part of the Doctrine because all of them do offer something fairly handy there. And there you go, Rout will grab these in a few point. Fifth killing up here for Chiefs and Katsu. Flak Half Tech being sent on its own. A bit risky. Doesn't know what's there. Could actually find an open maneuver. So, Fairly risky maneuver there by uh, Eternals or something like that, unsupported and unscreened. Kuba in there basically just still doing detection stuff in there. Which basically just means listening, I imagine, in on radio stuff and like that because doing that they weren't always Chelsea equally good at maintaining a radio silence. In some cases, like for example, the Americans would just drive straight up, like, you know, because of. Miscommunication drive all of their communication trucks right into the German lines, allowing the Germans to capture them all and listen directly on the American uh, communication, the radio stuff. Fun fact, Fulton vs. Pathfinder's here, catching up with the assault rifles, and these here pushing forward to the Sturm Pioneer. Rifles got routed, Chiefs and Cuts are definitely a bit of an awkward spot once more versus Eternal. Who's also brought in another MG 34. Now that's pretty like heavy on the suppressor weapons, like two MG 34s and a flat craft track feels. Perhaps a tad excessive to me. And I think you'd better off say like adding in some orbital soldaten or you know some other sort of infantry there, or maybe a light infantry gun. But then again, I mean you still got lots of pressure firepower, and that's obviously not gonna be terrible, but again I do think something a bit more offensively minded would be handy here. Schwer Pankles revealed. Arguably also slightly risky position here for a term considering how it's positioned it. Could you know Risk, you know, say double anti tank is moving up and just shooting it to bits there. And he's there, push forward here off through the eastern fields is quickly spotted here and stopped by Chief Sun Cutter's infantry. Sadly, in support of oh, woefully supported here, Eternal's men are forced back with significant casualties without inflicting any damage there to Chief Sun Cutter. Yes, going for the line from gun, still no orbs of Darden. Yes, Basil, you're a cat. Yes, that's a new microphone. And easily we got the Ralph Scott going for the Eastern Field Point. No, stop hitting it, Basil. I know it's heavy though, but I'd still like you to not try and push it off. I don't think the viewers would appreciate that. Flag happening eastwards there. Line for almost on there for turn. Still no doctrine though. That said, he does have like a fairly impressive suite of combined arms elements. The artillery, support weapons, infantry, anti-tank weapons, all that. Could also try and just extend more pressure on the west side. But it's definitely more occupied with these now. As you can see there, she said, "Cards." It's all starting to figure more about these. It's starting deploying more forces. We've got the bazooka team ready. To help deal with light vehicles and even armor. It's also possible to plan like setting up here and then firing the double anti-tank guns or. These multiple enter tanks on the chair up under the quarters, though he would need at least one more. More than the for Chiefs and Cuts, both sides getting out like artillery. Thumbs up. Always a find an overlooked uh, element in a lot of matches there. Even like high rank matches, light artillery I think can be overlooked, but it can actually be quite crucial in its utility. Fox trying to move in there, but they are being engaged with the lieutenant as well, who's ultimately got with BRs, but well in the center. There we go. Bazooka team mold. Looks like he. Chiefs and Cuts might have made a slight tackle error there. Oh, great hit from the artillery gun there. Almost taking out the fifth cover. I think more shot here could take it out. Holy smokes! He moved straight into the artillery shot. Oh, that's got to feel so bad there for Chiefs and Cuts being worse for the gunners. I think just most of them dropped it. And there you go, finish off the last one near. He could seize the fifth cover turning against, but there you go. Rob Scott flanking up behind the troops, denying Eternal, I think, the chance for it. The flag half tag is nearby, but it has been damaged with the entertainment. You can't support there either. Almost got the. Oh dear, this thing's an absolute mess here. Almost getting wiped. Then the Rob Scott and the Steel Punters go down, but no. Rob Scott gets away. Needs more support there, but it's not forthcoming. He needs orbital down or something else. 
Flagcraft checking gate here for the safe position where it's slightly safe from the enter tank and more folks driving plus replacement storm punier for the eternal. Fifth cut crewed up here by Pathfinders. That's definitely dangerous there for its own infantry. And they can actually spot further ahead for the machine gun in the west here. The Kettner falling back. Fifth cut pushback. Storm pioneer squad almost done here. No tech out here further for Chiefs and Cuts as of yet. Eternal still with our doctrine. Hard to say what he's planning here versus Chiefs and Cuts. They go good. They can punch it straight for the rear armor of the Stuart Light Tank. Seven kills close to that team two. Any fit for Corp with the Stuart Light Tank. Drifting forcing healing. Can caught out in the open. And you 34 in a slightly risky position between now once the mortar arrives here. Chiefs and Cuts, it could land a few good hits and take it out. Bazooka team under fire here. Stuart, there were seven kills. Almost had really done good work with it there. Doing really good work. Flag half taking fixed up. Still upgrade on the Storm Punier. He's actually got plenty of munitions, so you can start upgrading them with the maybe a uh, Pantra Strike there. I hope that's the Stuart plus any armor that Chiefs and Cuts and may decide to throw at him. Machine gun there needs reposition now. I think he gets the memo there and pulls back. But too late this time around though. Too late. Great kill there for Chiefs and Katsu. Definitely punishing internal here. So the flat craft tech makes it happen to get the hands on plus the three up hundred quarters. There we go. And this is extra bad for Eternals. And again, that's gonna be like, you know, a machine gun again with further range thanks to the Pathfinders. Almost gets it there, but I think it narrowly gets away despite all attempts here by Eternals. Nope, he does wipe it, but. It's going to be tough here, but we're going for the flag craft tech. Cool bugging, already a smoldering husk. And in far west, we got the fortress that might be setting up a flank here, but still no doctrine for eternal. I mean, we're slowly approaching the 20 minute mark. You can just not to have one. And there you go. Got the MU34 and ran away with it. That was a very painful engagement. The far east, MU34 went in the few pawn there. Closing in the pants of way for eternal. Chiefs and cuts it. I think, believe, I believe he had. Is finally going for the major. Finally, can take over there. Fox has been caught out in the open. Other squad there. Met with 50 cover fire. Is forced to pull back. Then the flag crafting up. Backed up the Kedma. But there's still the anti tank there. Getting a great hit. Eternal is floundering a bit. He unable to find good footing here versus Chiefs and Cuts. He is taking a bit of a beating. Ooh, might be able to get the studio with the Pantafast and the Kedma for combo. But nope. Didn't get the Pantafast off. Did not get it off. Did get it though, nonetheless we've got the kind of fit. They're lucky for Eternal. Very lucky. Yes, Basil. He's studying the microphone at the moment. That's what the fault's gonna do is. against Ralph Court there, Pantherform all day for a turn, but still no Doctrine. I do wonder what he's planning. I do wonder what Eternal is planning, like, we're almost 20 minutes of the game, he hasn't chosen a Doctrine. Like, is it lead armor just for the heat shells maybe, and the Pants Commander? Is it scavenge for the artillery and the infiltration tactics, or smoke bombs from this one? I don't know. I'm not entirely sure if Eternal is aware either. Unfortunately for him, but fortunate for Chiefs and Katsu. Entering there, it looks like he's going to try and take out the Shrap Hunt quarters. And there you go, Flak Half Track finally bit the dirt there. Under the dust. Great kill there for Chiefs and Katsu. Removes a significant obstacle to his infantry continued survival. And the West Major Grand Point, see Pantaform's done here though. Definitely to use it wisely here. There is still no doctrine, but there you go. Panther for Moldier out. Going for the pinlock machine. Oh, he does go for a lead on this. going to go for the Panzer Commander then for increased accuracy in the gun plus access to some artillery call -ins. I mean, that could be fairly helpful there for uh, Eternal Master Chiefs and Katsu. Could not be a purse of that. But looks like he's sticking to the pin at MD34, which I mean is also a solid choice, but. I think in the under current circumstances, the Panzer Commander. There we go. He's going for the Panzer Commander. Thumbs up there to Eternal. I took the MD-34. Got a wipe here somewhere. Very good. Show me for Chiefs and Katsu. Freedom and democracy. Panther pushing forwards. Flanking the 50 cal. Eternal could benefit from some Orbital done. But I imagine at some point we're probably going to be looking at a Storm Tiger, which has become very popular in the Orbital Commander S meta game due to his ability to well, explode things very efficiently and get wipes. 
almost, you know, near consistently. There you go, Panzer Commander, almost done. Giving it improved line of sight, accuracy, and of course the ability to call in a fairly, you know, well cost artillery barrage, even if it's not swift today, you call in until in the mortar. Obviously, obviously forced to retreat, but I'm not telling you like it's it worth it anyways. The kind of artillery badge you got going here with the Panther Force, more like you want to call in during an attack, like you know, you're running from one angle, calling it to one place, and then you force them to like either deal with the attack or retreat entirely. At which point it's sort of like more like you know, good bets like you know, force retreat, or you know, again, get a lot of kills with the artillery. Or if they're not paying attention because they're too caught up in the attack, I mean, again, you're guaranteed kills, so. And it's got a few points once more. Chiefs and catch Shrem rolling head to go for another one soon. Could also plan Jackson's or something else. Nicely code never hit there. Second shot webs. Panther Forbes got the reactions there. And the West 50 coming up here for the MG 55 for the Western Fuel Point there. At this rate, Eternal could definitely push out a Sturm Tiger here, I think, versus Chiefs and Cuts. We got some Orbs Garden, though. Thumbs up. Some more Elite Infantry for Eternal. Power Punch of the Photon Deers. Light Team Fanta Lake should still have a 7 kill. 22 Multi with 1 kill, but that's since you won. Antenna around the flank. You're going to engage the Panda 4. Good. And this, of course, your Eternal, in which case you're probably not too keen on that. feel like this could maybe try to sink at least a victory point. Obviously a bit risky, but I think the payoff could be fairly significant. At least handy. Another Sherman there for Chiefs and Katze. Excellent. Fox trying to assist here. Panfalls are flanking. Now this is sort of position like and then flank up behind him, calling the Tillian into tank. I think that could be fairly effective for Eternal, for example. Nice shot there. Also Kevin Lancer hits up, punching straight for the rear of the Sherman. Orbis on pushing forward, slapping him almost done. Pantafall using the train here to try and obscure any counter-attack fire here from Chiefs and Katza on it. They turn roaming here to explore in the gap now created here as Chiefs and Katza falls back and splits past this force. But there you go, calling in the US Air Force to push back the Pantafall, giving the chance here to launch a counter-attack here on Eternal doing some damage. Eternal doesn't pull back there though, and actually almost... Well, he got, got really lucky there with those rockets, like most of them pretty much managed to miss the Pantafall. And I think the other pilot's a bit lost. Oh, there we go. Fine. Oh! Shit! Almost got the Stuhl Puny and the Ken Ergo. Got both of them with a second volley there. Eternal lingered too long. Yeah, that was punishing. Forcing him to go for another Stuhl Puny squad and destroy the Ken there for excellent there for Jason Katz. Even got didn't get like the Panther Fort. So that's uh, a fairly oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, he's getting too close, they're too close, Mike Lewis losing the Panther 4 here, just on the Kedmaffer. That was definitely very dicey there for Eternal. There we go, your Air Force going for it, ah, oh, they almost got it, the Sherman's almost, no, oh, there we go, got it, but he might lose the Sherman in a turn here. Still, I'd say for the Air Force to get effectively help get knock out of the Panda 4 and taking out the Lakedna from the Sturm Pine as well. That's you know pretty good value there for Chiefs and Carter. It's only there, I think, got a bit too confident. So I like to maintain uh, focus on where the actual range of the P47 was. All the way, very painful there for Eternal. Chiefs and Carter, of course, already has a tank out. Can begin pushing out more. As for Eternal, is it a Sturm Tiger now? Is it a Panther? Is it another Panda 4? Hard to say. Plus, his loss is anti tank weapons for now. So, like, just more tanks here for Chiefs and Cats. It could be quite devastating. Did get, grab the Eastern uh, Victory Point there at least. We got 436 215. Sounding here the Flat Calf Tech and also salvage the Sherman there, Wreck. And of course, the Pentaful Wreckage is also a nice salvage target. So, thumbs up, there's a total. Follows being pushed back by the advancing force here. A nice. Mix of infantry and tank weapons and machine gun support there. We're making that machine a bit more active in the south there. In the far west, we've got the Shell moving up. Fifth cover not added yet. And oh, hasn't salvaged that one. And routed. No mercy there. Aiming. Uh, well, tried to lay down some mines. Should cancel those and get the munitions back. 
So we'll have to see what the tunnel's planning. It's going to be like uh, the Panther Storm Team at this rate. Storm Team would be great versus Lincoln's Port Weapons. Panther would be okay versus one Sherman, I suppose. On the other hand, of course, does go for the Storm Team. He does lack any like, serious threat in the Sherman, so he may actually have to go for the Panther here, though he really should just go for a Panther 4. But we shall see what Eternal goes for. Adding the penalty machine and smokes in here from Tucson Cancer. Thumbs up. Alright, moving forward. <coughs> God damn it, what are you using for the smoke? I think it's Marlboro, sir. <coughs> that smooth, smooth <coughs> flavor. God damn it. And you feel the point team. We got Paris for Tucson Cancer. Was wondering where they went to. Went off to, in fact, he's almost used every ability now, except I think calling in the 50 cal. I might actually miss out on that one. At which point he does have bingo if he has. There we go. Eternal does go for the Panther here. He may have wanted the Sturm Tiger, but having absolutely no anti tank weapons with the Sherman, that would be fairly suicidal. Admittedly, though, again, Panther's not like great either. But it's better than the Sturm Tiger against the Sherman. We can say that much. Telefrag then close the Ralph's Call here in the West Sherman, the Demon, the Sturm Puny, at least attempting to. She said, Cut there is visual manpower. No sign of armor. There we go. We got the paratroops there hitting the ground and in the. Pendle mounted light machine gun, oh not pendle mounted, just running light machine guns there. Those are definitely not pendle mounted unless they can somehow, I guess, add them to the helmets. While well, they did add funny markings to the helmets, I don't think they added pendle mounts. No oh, funny marking, but you know. Mortier caught with the orbs are done. On the west side, we get the parrots coming up, they push back the Sturm Puny, and once they get upgrade the Sturm Puny, will stand no chance of range. Force go around on the flank here. Panthers arrived here for Eternal, adding the Panther Command to that one as well, the Panther Commandant. Follows the find the cover vanishing right before the eyes as Tiesen cuts his men unleash a torrent of death. In the centre, bring forward to the cover of smoke, opposite on the flank in the fifth cal, at least trying to, and there we go. Except for Fritz, that was a bit too bloody slow. In the way, Sturm Punia being mauled by the paratroop, the double light machine calls effectively cutting them to shreds in the centre. Fultz being murdered here as they murdered the Pathfinders. Almost got the fifth cal here. Could also get the Pathfinders here with the Orbs Arden. Fultz called wiped. Oh dear. Really heavy losses here for both sides. And the Orbs Arden fend up retreating as well here. Panther through the center. Restraint to the anti tank. And here, Eternal here is on a rampage. He wishes to avenge his fallen soldiers. To achieve vengeance. Back here, troops preparing for the next big push, but yeah, it turns calling to Sean into the well, until he called in there, though may not hit. Can he just clear out the beacon, I suppose? Panther to snap something, there we go, beacon destroyed. But I imagine he really wanted to watch the destroy was the anti tank gun and not the beacon. Catching the machine gun crew with the footsteps there. Panther pushing full bouts. We got Finn 83 is 199. Slowly being bled out here by Chiefs and Katz's. Bazooka team there with the eight kills. Panther folks going to be moving forwards. Panther getting the Sherman. Finishing shot head on. Direct hit from the interstate. And they're punching straight through the Panther's 80mm of sloped armor. The West Tier Point being seized. Another MD for a tunnel here. Interesting decision there. Interesting. Oh, he cancels it. I wasn't entirely sure why we'd go for an MD-34 here. Mortar there with three kills. Ooh, four kills. Halfway to the east, laying down smoke screen. Very good there for Chisan Katsu. And that mortar, I would say, has been a fairly good investment for him so far. Though, admittedly, I mean, so has the land for for turn too. Again, like in artillery, can typically just be a very nice uh, investment, particularly remember to use the smoke screens. Though, of course, smoke sadly does not really gain experience or show anything like that in terms of stats. So it can be harder to, you know, evaluate or read that as you need successful things. And these, so they got the power hunting back, they're equipped with BARs as well, becoming bar finders. Pan could then in need of repairs. Orbs on push back here. I'm guessing he might be planning here Storm Team to maybe hope to blast his way through the American lines here. Got it from the Panther that punch straight for the Sherman's armor. Sherman will bounce off the Panther's armor. And in the east here, oh, very nice length of the bar finds Catch the machine crew then wipes it out. Thumbs up there to Chiefs and Cuts. Please show me the way to the next BAR. 
don't ask me why. Children forcing healing here. We got a Jackson Tensional Infantry Sun Katsu, possibly sending something more armored big here from Eternal. There we go, Sturm Tig available. Sturm Tiger, though, first saw service in the Finding in Warsaw, when they were putting down the Uprising there. Well, technically the second Uprising. First one was in the Jewish ghettos, second one was by the Polish residents of Warsaw. The non Jewish ones. And we used there to blow up the uh, different uh, hiding holes there of the Polish Home Army. Fun fact there. Sherm sitting out there for Chiefs and Cutting Eastwards. Clear okay, something westwards there for the big two point. Minesweepers, of course, they're not worried about the shoots and mean it. Which I'd hit with the Storm Tiger, and there you go, finds massive rocket, but there you go, hits the light vehicle mine. Almost got the fifth card crew there. Panthers are charging in directly on the Sherman Jackson tank destroyer is arriving just here. Got three kills there on that, but he didn't even wipe the machine crew entirely, so that was a bit awkward there for a turn. An explosive entrance, but not enough bang for his buck, I suppose. There you go, Sanctuary Lot, the Storm Tiger. In the West, we got a push for the point. They're being caught here with a MG-34, stopping the counterattack. In Eternal is so short and infantry effective in some ways. He's also got no support weapons left. In fact, Chiefs and Cuts, of course, got another machine gun out here from under Eternal. So now he's got three machine guns versus Eternal's zero. None. Nada. Zilch. Storm Teague almost good to go. He jacks to fight the Shrap Hunted Quarters. Good hit by the Panther there, gaining medicines one against Jackson. Good hit from the M1 and Tank, and then punch straight from the side armor of the Panther. The side armor of the Panther was relatively weak. In fact, it was such a great concern that the Germans were actually planning to move straight ahead to the Panther 2 project, but realized by slapping 5mm of side armored skirts on there, they didn't really need to, at least to some degree, so they stuck with that instead of developing an entire new tank. Fun fact. Sturm to get the rate to fire again. Here we got 8 that's on 90. Power finds there, bar finds no catching the folks here. We got the Brav Squad backing up as well. Lots of BAR's so there's the folks going to be a squad. Sturm Tiger moving up. Trying to catch the unity of the rocket. There you go, pull back. Nice up the anti tank gun there. Need to get that one out there before it gets turned into, well, tiny bits and pieces. Need to cover the dust. Drive too far in there. Good right from the Jackson, the Sherman. Flanking behind, we got the anti control joining in. The there we go, anti tank rocket nades. And now the Sturm Tiger is in deep shots. It's UT and oh, it doesn't even wipe them. Almost wipes them, but falls a bit short there. In fact, it almost came into two there. But there you go. Sturm Tiger is cut foot. And with that, Eternal's uh, great big explosive hope has been snuffed out. Like a faulty fireworks. And a bucket of sand. There you go. Panther there. Almost 22. Panther driving here, but it's already down to half of anti lining up with the armor piercing rounds. There you go. Could very well type got the infantry to that. There you go. Panther down, kaput. And with that, Eternal has no armor left. Of course, no anti tank weapons. He could try and grab the anti tank, but so much tripping the bite, it's going to be difficult for Eternal to get it out of there. So his options now versus Chiefs and Kata are quite frankly severely limited. In mind. He's just got a few infantry scores left, and his opponent's got artillery, machine guns. Well, no tanks, but he can replace those things much more easily than his home can replace his losses. So, a brutal fight here between Eternal and Chiefs and Katz, but it looks like Chiefs and Katz and then wins out here versus Eternal and the Germans. About to get wiped there, and there you go, exterminated and eliminated. And I think Eternal there might have dropped out already, it's just again, you know, there's this delay before the game actually currently catches up on it. So there we go, GG game over. A loss here for Eternal, a victory for Chiefs and Cutter. A nice brutal fight here. But in the end, Eternal unfortunately had some slightly awkward tactics. Also, I think at times could have been more aggressive, but didn't quite, ex you know, pull it through. And again, the Panther just, you know, I think you're better off with the Panther form some more orbs done earlier on. I think, again, he extended too much into too many machine guns and would have been benefited more from more elite infantry early on to that way, gain a slightly either versus Chiefs and Cuts in that realm. So, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this match. I learned something from it. And again, please, if you know, let me know how the new microphone is. You know, if they need to adjust it a bit here and there. This is Impel Link Tears. Thank you for watching. Until tomorrow again for our nice episode. Bye.